But I make no apologies in my last position, and I make no apologies for what I'm about to say. If I believe health care is a right as I do, I can no longer support an amendment that makes that right dependent on someone's zip code. He said he had changed his mind, Speaker, as a result of Republican state lawmakers enacting what he called extreme laws in clear violation of constitutional rights. Look, poor Joe. Um, he can't remember what he is uh, busy copying from somebody else uh, and what he's made up on his own. Uh, he can't remember his own positions. Uh, he'd like to be in the center, and his party won't let him. Uh, he'd like to be above the fight, and his party won't let him. Um, he just repudiated his entire career on the issue of whether or not taxpayers should be required to pay for abortions. His entire career just got repudiated. And I think what he's going to prove to you in the next few weeks is he will throw out anything he has to throw out to appease the left, at which point, frankly, it almost becomes irrelevant if he gets nominated because he'll just be one more tired example of a left-wing, out-of-touch politician. Uh, remember that overwhelmingly the American people are opposed to taxpayers having to pay for abortion. Uh, so I think this is a position, once again, where the extremists are taking them into a position that makes it harder for them to win. The Wall Street Journal editorial board makes a similar point, Mr. Speaker. Joe Biden's green free lunch. In that piece, they write, presidential hopeful Joe Biden released a $1.7 trillion proposal on climate change, mirroring far left climate change plans. They write, his new plan will play on the coast, but it gives Trump an opening. Moving on to what we saw the past few days, Mr. Speaker, play out overseas with the president's trip. Um, even from some unlikely places. He is being praised, especially for his speech on D-Day. How did the president do on, on, this, on this big trip? Well, I look, I, first of all, I thought the speech was unbelievably good, uh, very emotional. If people have not read it or they've not seen him deliver it, they should. I thought his use of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's prayer to the country on D-Day uh, was very powerful at Portsmouth. I think in some ways what helped him the most was having dinner with the Queen. I mean, it's quite obvious that he was totally taken with her uh, and that he loved it and that she seemed to like him. And I think for the average American, that's very reassuring. I mean, you're beginning to see the emergence of a genuinely presidential Donald Trump. I, I thought, for example, that the, the uh, interview he did with Pierce Morgan may have been the most presidential interview I've seen him do. At every level, he was modulated. He was more like Reagan than he was like, like the normally aggressive and, and pugnacious Donald Trump. So I, I think he's had a great 10 days. I think it makes the House Democrats look weaker and sillier. Uh, and I think for the country, you know, now he's got to solve the problem with Mexico. He's got to avoid a recession. Uh, you know, he's got stuff on his, on his uh, plate to do. But I think he, he's coming back home with an awful lot of uh, goodwill based on this trip. It was certainly 